Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Jan and something showed up to the farm today that's gonna give away completely what we're building this summer. So I'm gonna show you guys right at the beginning here. Uh, I just finished cleaning out the straw packs out of the corrals. Took a total of nine and a half days. I finished this afternoon, so that's awesome. We're literally dropping the bunny manure spreader off and hooking it straight up to our liquid manure tanker. Hopefully tonight we can start pumping liquid. We are gonna haul 24 hours. Dima's gonna do the day shift, I'll do the night shift. I imagine that's gonna take three days. I think that's 72 hours total of hauling. We hope to get five feet down out of that pit. We're probably gonna hit solid material after that. But in terms of the giveaway, uh, I picked the two winners already. They guessed pretty correctly. Um, and I DM them so if you check your DMs and I message you shoot me a message back But with that being said uh, they those guys both guessed grain bin storage And that's exactly what showed up to the farm this morning. We got four Meridian bins. These are 4,000 bushels a piece. I believe They're the exact same bin right there as our fertilizer bins But this is gonna be part of our new feed mill for the dairy farm. So we're gonna be building a completely new feed mill and hammer mill setup on our farm. It's gonna be between our hay shed right there and our equipment shed. I don't think you can see the parlor barn. It's behind the liquid manure tanker, just to kind of give you guys an idea exactly where in the yard this is gonna be. So we have a whole wide open space here and that's where we're gonna be building it. A couple of key features with this feed mill setup. We're gonna have a 70 foot high grain leg in the middle of it where B trains or any kind of truck can dump directly into the grain leg. It's gonna carry it all up and then put it into these bins behind me. And a couple other bins, these are not all the bins that are gonna be in this thing yet. There's still more to show up. Uh, we already have the grain leg. We'll walk over there in a second. It's also gonna have an in-ground whey permeate storage, I believe 75,000 liters which is about three trucks worth. So that should be pretty awesome as well. That's gonna be underneath a couple of the bins. We're also gonna have a smaller grain leg, which is gonna lift the grain from our hammer mill and it's gonna lift it up into some smaller bins. There's also gonna be a storage shed for the hammer mill, but also for a ton of pallets of feed for minerals and that sort of thing. So we can keep it all here, keep all our ingredients for the TMR right here in a nice convenient spot. One other thing that we're gonna build as well. It's going to be kind of apart from this storage facility or the feed mill. Uh, we're also going to be buying a scale. So that's going to be for trucks that want to sell us grain. They can get weighed and then we can know exactly what they're dropping off here and pay them accordingly. The one cool thing about this feed mill setup is we're going to be able to process multiple different commodities through our hammer mill. Right now it's just barley or corn. You guys saw us put that new hammer mill set up in there I think a year and a half ago now. Uh, we're going to be moving that hammer mill over here and we're going to set it up so we can put multiple commodities through that hammer mill and then local farmers that you know have a bit of grain a lot of guys will come and they'll say hey we got some wheat it's got a bit of barley mixed in with it do you want to buy it yeah sure we'll put it in the bin and we'll hammer mill it and send that uh, sample off to our nutritionist who will print us up an ingredient list to which we can feed to the milk cows and that's what this is going to do hopefully we'll be able to save money on grain and you know buy some smaller amounts of grain it's just going to give us more flexibility and allow us to get away with hopefully some cheaper ingredients so we hope to save some money with this uh, investment it's obviously going to be a huge financial uh, commitment from the dairy farm not only saving money but also time and convenience that grain leg is gonna always be there or, you know you don't have to start a tractor and get that thing going to unload the semi we'll just be able to dump it into the grain leg also, we're moving grain constantly to our existing feed mill because the bins are smaller. And as you guys can see, these are a huge upgrade to what we're working with right now. So this is our grain leg. It's in a bunch of parts. Dad bought this at an auction, I think three years ago now. It was pretty much brand new. I don't think it was used at all. And he got it for pretty cheap. Just parked it beside the shed. You know, he had this vision that long ago and uh, knew it was a good deal. So we grabbed it when he could and now we're gonna make use of it. 
I believe it's gonna be four or five thousand bushels an hour. Pretty good sized grain leg. And then these are the trusses for the storage shed that we're gonna build beside it. So you can see it's a decent size. It's definitely bigger than the one we have around our hammer mill right now. We are gonna incorporate a couple of the existing bins from around the yard. I know that big tall DDG bin is gonna come over here and a couple other bins we're gonna pull over here. So it's all gonna come together right here. And uh, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, sometime this fall we'll be able to use it. That's pretty optimistic, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You guys should definitely let me know what you think of that if you're excited to see that go up. I gotta say you guys had a ton of excellent guesses. A couple of really ones that I liked were the sand separator. Uh, that was a really good guess. Uh, expanding the liquid manure lagoon, another excellent guess. I didn't expect that one to come in, but that was a really good guess. Another calf room, another great idea. We could definitely use another calf room. Another silage bunker. This is something that would be awesome or we're thinking about possibly doing too probably in a year or two. But uh, yeah, that's what the uh, expansion is for this summer. Enough about that, I gotta get back to work. I'm gonna get the Gia liquid tank hooked up to our MX-285. A lot of people are also asking what happened to this thing. Uh, it had another engine uh, problem, so it had to get rebuilt again. Just really bad luck. Um, we don't know exactly why it happened this time, but we started it this spring and the engine just stalled and seized up, so. Unfortunately, but our mechanic Brent, he fixed it right up again this spring and she's been running and she's good to go now. So we're gonna hook it up to the tank and hopefully tonight maybe we'll get started hauling some liquid. That's right, I gotta get the clavis off of this. Should do the trick. Well, I tried to get it lined up there, but this bolt is just completely mucked. I have absolutely no idea how that happened. This one too even, it's completely buggered up. I am so confused how that happened. Like, it doesn't look like anything else hit over here. Just literally these two bolts have massive marks on them. Well, let's see how we can get those off. Okay, round two. I just have to grab some safety glasses because I was getting pretty sketchy. That's all I wanted. So the tractor's hooked up to the tank now. We just gotta grease it, check the tire pressure in all eight tires, and then that thing's ready to go. But before we do that, I'm gonna go deal with the pump and the fill spout and the pipe and all that kind of stuff at the pit. Steal that guy for the pump, put this one in front of the feed wagon. Hauling at night with this thing is gonna be super fun because of all of the new LED lights we put on this thing, or mechanic Brent did. He put a nice curved light bar on the top of the roof. This thing shines perfectly down. I tried it out already at night and it's just super bright. Then we got a bunch of small cubes, or a bunch, there's two on the front. There's one right there and then one on the other side. And then on the back roof too, there's two smaller light bars there as well. Super bright, I'm really looking forward to using those tonight. This thing is completely ready to go. We checked all the tires, they're all good, they're all holding air. Didn't have to put air in a single one, so that's awesome. It's always nice when you don't have to replace a tire. 
We greased the entire wagon as well, so that thing's ready to go. The only thing we gotta do yet before we can start is grease the pump that is in the pit we just put in there. And we'll be ready to go. Today didn't quite turn out as I planned. I was hoping to be done a lot earlier, you know, to start taking a nap at like five or something, or four in the afternoon, and then wake up at eight and start hauling overnight, and then Demo would take over tomorrow at seven. But uh, it's almost eight now, so I'm not gonna get to bed for a while. I'll probably start at two in the morning or one in the morning, something like that. So I'll see you guys then. So we got the pump going. It is filling right now. Got the buttons in the back. The pipe goes up to the fill spout, and then that goes right into the tank. You can see we got the lights on the back of the tank working. I think this is the first spring those work. The hazards are going, so people that are driving on the road this early in the morning can see nice and clearly. Just checking all the tires, making sure they're round. And we get to the tractor now, the MX-285. It is looking amazing with all these lights on. It's unreal having these lights on there. It's so much brighter. Good lights on a piece of equipment makes operating in the dark a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it can be kind of hazardous at night, but if you light the world up, do a good job of that. It's, it's uh, just a fun thing to do. So this is my view out the front of the tractor. We're dumping right now. I can't see uh, the load being unloaded out the back. I just have to kind of believe it's going out the back. When I turn around, it's always there, so. We had our first little issue here this morning. The brakes on the tank were not backing off. This liquid manure tank has some pretty strong brakes on there and it makes it a lot safer to rip down the road with it. But um, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to use them because we're able to apply the brakes, but they don't back off again. So once you start driving forward, the tractor's spinning out and uh, it has a tough time getting going again. So we'll uh, get mechanic Brent to check that out maybe later this morning when he gets here. Since we're out here anyway, we're just gonna check and make sure that everything's still hooked up properly. Make sure that pin's in there good. Wow, I can still spin that around, it's pretty good. PTO looks good. Nothing's touching the PTO. You always just wanna be extra cautious when you're starting out in the dark like this. Well, it got light out. It's just before seven in the morning and Dima's probably gonna come pretty soon here. He's gonna take over at seven and then I'll take over at seven in the evening and then he'll take over at seven in the morning. And that's kind of how we're gonna do it. But it got super foggy. I know this morning it was clear when I started there was no fog, but this morning it's just absolutely gray out. I'm not even a kilometer away from the farm. I can't even see halfway there, so. Gotta be pretty careful on the road. You guys can see those ditches are starting to turn green. Looks awesome. Well, that's the end of my shift. Dima's taking over now. Yep. Are you excited to haul some shit, man? Yeah. <laughs> right it's on. Fun to do. Yeah. Well, we just got Dima going on the liquid tanker there. He's done this two years before. He's got quite a bit of tractor driving experience at this point. Uh, he packs silage as well. So uh, that's cool, cool. 
So it's good to go along with the first load for somebody to refresh them and just uh, kind of ease them getting into it again. But uh, it's awesome to start getting into some of these bigger spring jobs. For our dairy farm, the biggest jobs in the spring are liquid manure, solid manure, and putting seed in the ground. So we're gonna start putting seed in the ground probably today or tomorrow if we're lucky. And then, uh, yeah, maybe two days from now, maybe three, we'll be done liquid manure as well. So it's awesome to start to get some of these bigger spring jobs on the go and getting some of them out of the way already. It just feels good. But that is gonna be it for today's video. If you liked it, hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. It really helps the channel out. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.